As you may know, I am working on my memoir. I just finished my rough draft, which is very exciting, but it's been a long road. <laughs> As you may or may not be aware, my memoir features some pretty intense topics, since it's a memoir about healing through PTSD and trauma and other mental health issues. As you can imagine, some of the parts get pretty intense. Now, there's nothing in this book that would, I, I feel, overly trigger someone. It's not really graphic, but these are things that I'm writing about that used to throw me into panic attacks, that used to, that used to really stress me out to a point where I would disassociate and not be able to function. So the biggest question now is how did I get through writing a book like that. When I first started writing my book, I wasn't sure how I was going to get through it either. I couldn't get through some of the stories without having a panic attack or crying uncontrollably or anything like that, but I knew it was a really important story to tell, so I went to my therapist. Me and my therapist have been doing EMDR together for a little while now. If you haven't heard of what EMDR is, EMDR is a great therapy modality that is used often to treat people who have, you know, panic attacks, stress, anxiety, PTSD, etc. EMDR basically uses bilateral stimulation to quiet your mind, but I'll get more into that in a second. We have been doing EMDR, and he suggested that I take EMDR into my book writing sessions. Now, EMDR is usually something you do with a therapist, so how do you do this at home by yourself? Wow. I had some tools. So I have two tools, uh, Theratappers and Touchpoints, neither of which are sponsored. I do have an affiliate link for Touchpoints, but that's it. Um, for writing my book, I used mostly these, but I used both of these tools. While I was writing my book, I used both of these tools to not only write my book, but actually continue to heal and overcome some of these things that I've been going through. So, what are these? I'll show you them in a little more detail in a second, but let me tell you what they do first. <laughs> so what both of these things do is they create bilateral stimulation by, they both vibrate. Um, so they both create bilateral stimulation through vibration, which is basically the basis of bilateral stimulation that's used in EMDR. So what is bilateral stimulation? Bilateral stimulation is when you use physical, verbal, or audio stimulation to activate both brain hemispheres simultaneously. This can look like eyes moving back and forth, audio sounds in your ears, uh, some songs you'll be listening to in your headphones, especially all the ones you find on TikTok and they kind of move back and forth between the two. That's bilateral stimulation. Or in my case, it can be physically through vibrating paddles. This kind of bilateral stimulation is similar to rapid eye movement or REM sleep, which you experience when you're sleeping. Uh, during REM sleep, you essentially access your brain in a very different way. As we know, we get a lot deeper into our brains when we sleep, especially when we dream. So this is kind of along the lines of that. Essentially, therapists use bilateral stimulation to refile memories. I can go in deeper into how EMDR and all of this works in, a, in another video, but for now I'm gonna explain it really simply. <laughs> or try to. So when you experience a traumatic event, in order to protect yourself, your brain puts that memory in the foreground. Basically, it tells you that that memory is in your present and it is happening all the time, which is why people experience you know, so much stress and so much anxiety and panic attacks, etc. When that happens, your memories are not supposed to be there. Your memories are supposed to shift into your long-term memory and go back in the timeline where they're supposed to be. They're not supposed to feel like they're happening all the time. So what bilateral stimulation can do is you can bring yourself into the moment, use the bilateral stimulation, which tells your brain that you're in a safe space and helps refile those memories so that they can go back where they're supposed to be. You don't forget anything by any means, but instead of it being something that's happening in the present, it becomes something that's happening in the past, which is where it's supposed to be. <laughs> all right, so knowing all this information about how EMDR works and how bilateral stimulation works, and knowing that we have these tools available, me and my therapist came up with a plan. Basically, what I would do is I would use one of these two tools to create bilateral stimulation while I was writing about some of these traumatic events, and it would help me to write 
in a calm way relatively so <laughs> so now let me let me show you for for most of my book i used this one but um generally i find this uh touch points to be a little more convenient and easy to use so for the majority of writing my book all i had was the thera tappers which are wonderful so here's here's what they look like here's what they look like um, so basically these are the two paddles and these vibrate and the, this is how you control the length, the intensity, the um, length in between buzzes. So you just flip it on. I'm not sure you'll be able to tell anything about this, but they're vibrating. What I did is I put one of these two paddles under opposite legs and while I was writing, I didn't have any panic attacks. I know how useful this was because I did write a couple days without these and the days I wrote without these were horrible. I had panic attacks, I disassociated really hard. Um, these were a lifesaver whenever I used them and actually I found that after I had used them, when I thought about the aspect of the same event, it didn't stress me out anymore. Like for instance, for instance there was a lot of little details. It seemed like when I did EMDR in therapy, it worked really, really well. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely wonderful. But it took a really long time because I felt like I'd heal one part and then a new part of the memory would trigger me or there would be something that I would remember that I didn't realize was um, upsetting to me before. But when I sat down and I wrote in such detail with these under my legs, I found that I was able to dig into it deeper and when I went into my sessions, it felt like I made more progress. So now I also have these touch points. These are so much more convenient, especially if you're going places and you kind of want to wear them for a long time. The other ones you kind of have to be sitting down or stationary. So these are two little remote paddles. Two, let's see, don't focus on my face. All right, essentially two little remote paddles. Um, you have a leader and a follower. Let's see if I can turn them on like this. All right, and these ones have specific settings. So now it's buzz, 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 buzz. And this is the slowest setting and you can move it to a faster setting and an even faster setting. So the fun thing about these is that you can put them on your wrists, they have little wrist straps that you can put them on with, you can put them in your pockets, you can put them in your socks, and you can kind of just wear them around if you need to. When I wear these, if I'm in like a stressful situation, like the airport, which you do get weird looks because they're a little loud, but airport's loud anyway, so who cares? Or if I'm getting ready to do a test at home, or I'm about to go into a meeting, or if I'm even... I even use these if I need to have a difficult conversation with my partner because they really help keep me calm. They don't stop you from having emotions, but they really help to keep those big emotions more manageable, which is really all I'm looking for at this point. So I have used these also in the course of writing my book. Same idea. I put them on while I'm writing. I write for as long as I need to, and I find that I'm able to dissect and tell the information without panicking. So these keep me functional and then afterwards I find when I think about the same thing, again, I have a significantly smaller body reaction to it. So I mean I get less stressed. So if you're, may, maybe if you're writing a memoir, if you're a student or anyone, really anyone who gets stressed under situations sometimes and you think something like this could be useful, definitely talk to your therapist about EMDR. EMDR is wonderful. I'll make an entire video just on EMDR in my experience someday. Not someday, I'll make one soon. <laughs> it's on my list of videos to make. Um, but also you can get touch points and TheraTappers, link in the description. I will say TheraTappers, you are supposed to be a mental health professional to get these, but I have them. I'm not a mental health professional. Um, touch points are much more made for just whoever to use. And so I find them a lot easier. Uh, even on their website, they have a encyclopedia of uses. So you can go on that encyclopedia and look for, okay, anxiety, 
anger, procrastination, uh, trouble with, like, t relational trouble, or they even have settings for kids. So, and they'll tell you exactly in those, according to what you're feeling, they'll tell you exactly which mode to use. So, these are very user-friendly. <laughs> My only qualm is they're a little loud, but for, for how helpful they are, I don't even care. That's how I got through writing the first draft of my book. Um, I cannot wait to share it with you all. I'm working on the second draft right now, which should be done soon. Fingers crossed. This takes forever. It is so challenging, but really rewarding, and I'm really uh, getting excited about it. So thanks for watching, and let me know if you have touch points or if you've ever tried an EMDR. I'd love to hear about your experience. Thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.